So, what we really care about is are there planets around normal stars, not as opposed to these weirdo pulsar planets. So, Brian, how might we work this out? Well, a normal star doesn't have this nice little pulse of radio going off at an absolute perfect cadence. So we're sort of stuck with stars like the sun shining. But when we think about the Earth orbiting the uh, sun, then, of course, the sun has to move around a little bit. And so the sun and the Earth both go around the center of mass of the two objects. And so we expect a planet to cause its star to wobble a little bit. And so, although it may be very hard to see the planet itself, we can, of course, look at the wobble of the star. So that's one approach. Go and look for a star that's wobbling in little circles. This would be the case if, like here, the orbit is pretty much um, face on. Another possibility would be if the orbit is more edge on. So that adds a complication because it's not going in a nice little circle now, it's going in some little ellipse on the sky. But it also gives you another thing you could possibly measure, which is that this thing is moving towards and away from us. So now it's coming towards us, now it's going away from us, the star that is, coming towards us again and going away from us, and that could have a Doppler effect. So for example, if that's the normal spectrum of the star with absorption lines of some description, when it's moving away from us, that might get shifted over to here, uh, then when it's moving towards us, it might get shifted the other way. So what you might look is for small shifts in the absorption line wavelengths. Okay, so that's two interesting ways that we can imagine going out and uh, finding a planet going around a nearby star. Okay, so I'll go and calculate how big these effects actually are. Okay, so let's work out how big a wiggle we would expect from a normal planet around a normal sun-like star. So we've got a sun-like star and a planet. Now let's model this on our own solar system. So let's give this the mass of the sun and give this the mass of Jupiter because Jupiter causes the biggest wiggles in our reflex motion we've got in our own solar system simply because it's so big. And we'll put these at the same separation as Jupiter is from the Sun in our own solar system, a little bit more than five astronomical units out. Now, if you remember, we had an equation for the orbital period, which was the square root 1 over g, 4 pi squared, over m1 plus m2, R cubed. So if we plug in the mass of Jupiter, the mass of the Sun, and the distance between them cubed, we end up with a period of 11.84 years, which is indeed Jupiter's orbital period. Good to check. So that's the first worry. It's telling us that you can't just observe for, you know, a few months, like you could for pulsar planets, to find plausible planets around other stars, you're going to need to look for decades to see a full sine wave. That's worry number one. Now, how big is the reflex motion wiggle? Remember the equation for this is R1, the reflex motion wiggle of the star, is equal to R1 over 1 plus M1 over M2 which if you plug in everything here, gives us 7.8 by 10 to the 8 meters, which sounds pretty big. If you compare it to the radius of the sun, it's about, the radius of the sun is 6.9 times 10 to the 8 meters. So it's a little bit bigger than the radius of the sun. So the sun's moving a little bit uh, more from side to side than its radius. But can we actually hopefully see that? Well, let's say we're here on the Earth and we're looking at a star over here that's moving in a circle by that amount. So. 7.8 by 10 to the 8 meters. 
what angle does that make on the Earth? Because this is going to determine whether we can see it with our telescopes at angle theta. Now, this is going to depend on how far away the other planet is. Let's say it's pretty near by a star only 10 light years away. Remember, the closest star is just over four light years. So there are a few few stars within 10 light years, not too many, but uh, most are going to be further away. But we could, in principle, do this. It's quite a nearby star. Now, if you remember, we can use a small angle approximation, which is that the angle in radians is equal to this, we'll call it R1, over the distance, let's call it D. So that's going to be about 7.8 by 10 to the 8, it's about 10 to the 9. meters over 10 light years, which is about 10 to the 17 meters. And that gives us the angle in radians. To convert into uh, something out of degrees, we have to multiply by 180 over pi. We will actually need to convert it into arc seconds, because it's going to be a very small angle in degrees. An arc second is 1 60th of an arc minute, which is 1 60th of a degree. So multiply by 60 times 60 to get into arc seconds. So it turns out for the reflex motion caused by something like Jupiter orbiting around a one solar mass star 10 light years away, we're talking about an angle of about 0.0016 arc seconds.